Good morning and thank you for joining us. Um, today's lesson we'll be looking at similarity. So we can see uh, for similarity, the sign we're going to be using is these three lines that are going vertical, right? If you can remember when we're doing congruency, the lines would go like this. So now we're just turning it 90 degrees and then we'll get the sign for similarity. So similarity, two triangles are similar if they have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. So that's the thing that we're looking at now is that the triangles will have the same shape but not the same size. And how will you know they have the same shape? This is the this is here by two triangles are similar if they are angles that are equal. So the angles are equal and corresponding sides are proportional. So how can I explain this? I can give you a comparison between congruency and similarity. Let's say if you put your two hands together, right? You put your hands palm to palm. Your two hands are congruent to each other because they are exactly equal. Okay? But when it comes to similarity, let's say you put your hand against, say, your little brother or sister's hand. Your hands are similar. They are not the same size, but they are proportional to one another. So that's the best way that I can explain that. Hopefully you understand through that. So our conditions for similarity now that we can identify is three angles are equal in the triangles. That has to be in both triangles. So straight away, you know that we're beginning looking for identifying three angles that will be the same or the corresponding sides are proportional. So we also have to look at ways that we can make the sides proportional. So straight away, let's just try and get into an example. So looking at the first example here, remember what these markers mean? We have a dot here, a dot over here, a star here, a star over here, and a square and a square. Those means that this, the, the angles that have the same sign in it, those are equal angles, right? Cool, so we're gonna go and look at this. So straight away we now, we start always, we say, in triangle, a, B, C and triangle D, E, F. So straight away you can really see there are some similarities between congruency and similarity the way that we attack the question. So this is our first step once again. We're identifying which triangles we are working with. So now that we've said we in triangle A, B, C and triangle D, E, F, we've identified the triangles. Now we can start to look for the different factors that make these triangles similar. So straight away we see, okay, we can see that angle A and angle D, they are equal. So we can say there, angle A is equal to angle D, right? And our reason for that is given. Remember, if they give us that, what the angles are, we can say that it is given as our reason. Now let's look at the next one. So we have angle B. So now we identify which angle is the same as angle B. We can see here it is it is angle E over here, right? So we can say now that angle B is equal to angle E. And our reason once again is that it is given. Now if we look over at our next angle over here, we can just say angle C is equal to angle F, right? And once again, we can say now that that is given. So how do we go about writing the last step? Again, it's going to be very similar to congruency. It's just that our reasoning and stuff is going to change now. So we can say, Therefore, triangle ABC is similar. Remember now our sign for similarity? We have these three vertical lines now that are parallel to one another. So triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. And our reason here is going to be angle, angle, angle cool so that's the first example using the first 
a rule which could say that three angles are the same in both triangles. So that's the first condition for similarity. Now let's look at this example over here. So we can see they give us two triangles, triangle ABC, triangle DEF, right? But what's going to, what we're going to do here, see, they've given us just the sides, right? They've given us just the sides, the length of the sides. So now we have to try and identify how these are proportional to one another, right? So how are we going to do that? We're going to say in triangle, ABC, and triangle DFE. So now we're going to look at the sides that would be proportional in this case. So if you look at that, we can see is 10 centimeters. Let's say for the sake that, it's, okay, we'll call it 10 units. This is 20 units, 13, 26, 30, 15. So how can we find some sides that are proportional? So let's see here. We got 10 over here, right? And we got 20 over here. Both, which are the base of the triangle, we can try and identify, right? So we can see that 10 is half of 20. 13 is half of 26. 15 is half of 30. So how are we going to write that? We're going to write here. First, let's say we're taking AB. We're putting AB over EF. Right? And then let's say now we're going to write in the values. AB was 10. EF, the line EF was 20 units. Straight away we can identify that. Remember similarity, we have to write it in its simplest form. So it's going to come down to 1 over 2. Cool. Now we're going to look at the next side that we can similar we have CB or BC over DF see here we have 13 over 26 simplified we get a half again remember we're getting the we simplifying by finding the highest common fact the highest common factor here was 10 10 goes in the stock once 10 goes in 20 twice and over here again, thirteen goes into itself once, thirteen goes into twenty six two times. Cool. And now we're gonna move on to the last side. We have AC and that is over the side D E. So if we look at that, AC is 15, and the length of DE is 30. Cool. So if we're going to simplify this, highest common factor 15, 15 goes into itself once, 15 goes into 30 two times. So as you can see, all sides are proportional to a half, right? Each side. So if we look at this triangle over here, this obviously has the bigger length. So if we look over here, obviously then, if our proportions is a half, this triangle is half the size of the one on the right over here. Cool. So for our final steps, we'll say, therefore, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DFE. And then our reason for this would be, you can write this next to it, I just don't have the space right now. Our reason is going to be sides proportional. Cool. So now we're done with that example. Moving on. So now we're going to look at a slightly complicated mixed example. 
So if you look at this, it says they ask us here for the first question to prove that triangle ACB is similar to triangle F D E. Cool. Just to explain how we're getting these arrangements of the letters over here of the different sides. The way that we do this is we look at the triangles and see which sides or which angles are similar so we can name the triangle as that. So if we're looking here, we can see that angle A has the star, right? So we'd always write A first, right? And we can see here angle F as the same star. So that's why in both cases over here, A is first and F is first in the name over here of the triangle. If we're going to look again, we can see D as the circle over here and C as the circle over there as well, which means that these will go together as well. So th those will both be the middle angle. So we have C here, and we have D over here. And obviously what we have left over is E and B. So that's just a bit of a crash course on how to get to naming our triangle, right? Because we want to put the paired angles with each other or the paired sides. Looking back at getting the answer, we have to prove that these two triangles are similar, right? So straight away we can see they give us a side over here and then they give us X. So they don't quite give us the, the name of the side or the length of the side right over here but if you look here they give us two sides but straight away we know we can't really prove that these two triangles are similar by looking at the sides right but what they do give us is two angles over here in both triangles straight away we have more information so we're going to go with that route and see where it takes us right so if you look at this now we can try and find the angles that are the same so straight away we can see don't forget the first step in triangle ACB and triangle FDE right angle A is equal to which angle angle F which was over here you can see they both have the star in them and we can say the reason is given now we look at the next angles that are the same we can say angle C is equal to angle D cool and that is again given so now we found two of the angles and we weren't necessarily given the other angle but how can we solve that so we're missing one angle in both triangles now remember both triangles already had given angles right and those angles were the same size and what do we know about triangles? Triangles, the angles add up to 180 degrees, right? So if we were to minus these two angles, we'd get the size of our angle over here. And if we were to minus these two angles, we'd get the size of our angle over here. Because these two sides are the same, these two angles are the same in both triangles, won't that make these angles exactly the same as well? If you think so, then you'd be 100% correct. So Straight away, we can say now that angle B is equal to angle E. So this wasn't given to us. We had to figure that out. So our reason for this is going to be what? Our reason is going to be the sum of interior angles of a triangle equal 180 degrees. We use this reason because, oops. We use this reason because, um, sorry, we use this reason because that's how we figured out that these two angles are the same. We figured it out by knowing that both triangles add, the angles have to add up to 180 degrees, right? So that was the first question, right? Moving on, oh, let's not forget our final step always. We're going to look at how we can conclude it. So we say, therefore, Triangle ACB 
is similar to triangle F D E and the reason for this is angle 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 that's three angles are the same cool so now if we just move on to the last question really quickly in this question they ask us calculate X so they want us sorry they want us to calculate X and this is 1.2 so they're asking us to calculate X over here so we have our X over there so how can we do this because we know the triangles are similar we know that the sides are proportional as well right so knowing that the sides are proportional if we looked at the names of the triangle again we had triangle a c b and we had triangle d no sorry it is f d e just take that as f d e over there so triangle a c b and f d e right so now we're going to look at which sides line up with each other so if we look at this we can see that CB line CB is 8 right and line DE is 4 so let's write that in okay CB over DE I'm just going to take you through the steps now we do this we know that CB over DE is equal to the length of AC over FD and is also equal to the proportion of AB and FE so we're basically just writing out the rule right now right so we have a length for CB and we have a length for DE they give us a length for AC as well no, sorry, they give us a length for AB and FE. So we're going to write those in what we know. So we have CB, which is 8, over DE, which is 4. We can say that's equal to, because remember the proportions are the same. So we say it's equal to. What is the length of AB? AB is X. Remember, that's the side of here, line AB. They gave us x over here and the length of fe is 3. so straight away you can see here we have a basic a basic solve for x sum right so if we're going to solve for x firstly we can simplify this 8 over 4 we know that's equal to 2 in total right So 8 over 4 equal to 2, and we still have x over 3, right? That's basically, we've simplified the fraction of here, right? So 8 over 4, it's basically 8 divided by 4, which equals 2. And we still have to x over 3. How can we get x by itself? We're going to times both sides by 3. So if we times by 3 here, th times by 3 over 1, times by 3 over 1, we get that these will cancel each other out. Because if we're dividing by 3 and we're timesing by 3, we can get the same answer, right? So we're left with x, and then it's 3 times 2, which gives me a final answer of 6. So the length of the line AB will be equal to 6. Cool. Okay, that concludes our recording for today.